Welcome to Virtual Wisdom Finance and Accounting Tutorials. My name is Peter and I will be your host in this particular tutorial. Our topic today is valuation of shares. Now what do we what do we mean by the term valuation of shares? Valuing is basically getting the current value of a given item. A share may have a different value from which it was issued at. If for example, when a company was started, a share was selling at shillings 5, with time the share might gain value or lose value. So if it gains value, that gain in value is what we call uh, a premium in shares. For example, the share which was issued at 5 shillings, if it is currently selling at uh, 7 shillings, the 2 shillings on top of the 5 shillings is what you call a share premium. Why is it important to value shares? Why value shares? Valuation of shares is very important. It's very necessary at some points. And I'm going to look at a few reasons why valuation of shares might be of essence in a given organization. One, valuation of shares facilitates takeover bids. Takeover bids, if a company is being taken by another organization, that organization that is taking over would like to know the actual value of that organization at the given time and therefore they need to value their shares. Another reason is to allow for mergers. If two companies are combining through what we call an amalgamation, they are combining to form one organization. It is, these two companies would like to know the value at which they are joining together and therefore it is necessary to value their shares. To facilitate for company accounts disclosure, when a company is preparing its books of accounts, it is good to know its asset value or its actual value, which must also know its capital, that is the current value of its shares, that is the ordinary shares at that given time. Another reason is for the purposes of acquisitions or disposal of blocks of shares. If there are people who want to dispose some shares by selling off, they would like to know the value of the shares at the time of selling. Another reason is for a certain stamp duty payable. For the purposes of paying stamp duty, you like to know the value of shares at a given time. I've just given a few reasons, but you can get more. So kindly, you can go ahead and read more reasons why shares are valued. There are various methods that are put in place in determining the value of a given share. The various methods of shares valuation. These methods include one, the dividend basis valuation. Two, earning method or what you call the earning basis valuation and three assets based valuation in this tutorial i'm going to look at the first method which is the dividend basis valuation the dividend basis valuation borrows its idea from the gordon model if you check from previous tutorials on uh, on the cost of capital, you realize that the Gordon model, this is where we are borrowing the knowledge or we are borrowing this method of valuing shares. And in this method, the question is given as follows. P0 is given by D0 divided by KE, whereby the P0 here stands for the current market price per share or what you call the MPS. This is the value of that given share in the market at the current time. How much is that share selling in the market now? That is the P0. Then the D0 here stands for the dividend per share. If an organization is paying 100 shillings as dividends, and maybe there are 10 shares that are being paid for, that will mean that every share is going to take 100 divided by 10, which is 10, uh, 10, uh, 10, 10 shillings in terms of dividends. So that will mean 
the dividend per share will be 10 shillings so that the total dividends can be 100 so this basically stands for the dividend for each individual share that is how much is each share taking as dividend then we have the ke ke stands for the cost of equity and if i take you back to the topic cost of capital you get the same the ke stands for the cost of equity apart from that so the first method here is normally applied if there is no growth in equity so if there is no growth in equity this is the method that you apply in the case there is if there is growth in equity if equity is if you are told that the equity is growing at a given rate the formula changes to the p naught is given by d naught into 1 plus g then you divide everything by ke minus g where in this case we have already talked of the pe which is the market price per share then we have the d naught here which stands for the dividend per share that is the dps then we have g which is the growth rate now you find that the g is the new item that has been included in this particular formula because here there is some growth in equity so the g here represents uh, the growth rate which is normally given in percentage we have already mentioned the ke and we have said that ke stands for the cost of equity those are the two formulas that are normally applied in uh, um, when you, you, you are valuing shares based on the dividend basis valuation method. Having a look at that, let's look at an illustration which will help us understand the concept better. And this illustration says, Green State Company Limited pays a dividend of 10% 10, 10, 10 on its shilling 60 per value ordinary shares this company uses a discount rate of 15 percent let's try to interpret this before we get to the required section it's saying that the dividend that is paid here is 10 percent they're paying a 10 percent dividend on the 60 shillings per value so you already know that the d naught will come from that value there that is the 10 percent of the per value which is shillings 60. Then apart from that, you are giving the discount rate. The discount rate, you can, you can also call it the required rate of return or the cost of equity, which is given by 15%. Then, you required. A. Assuming no growth, compute the value of its ordinary shares. So if there is no growth, what is the value of shares? Part B. If there is growth of 5%, what would be the value of this company's ordinary shares? Let's start with part A. Part A was saying that where there is no growth of equity. So if there is no growth of equity, what is the value of these shares? I take you back to the, very, uh, to the methods that we have here. We say that if there is no growth, the method that is applied is P0 equals to D0 divided by ke so in this particular question the first part of this question our p naught will be given by d naught divided by ke and we have already seen that from our illustration we have seen that d naught is 10 percent of 10 percent of the per value which is a uh, uh, 60 shillings so that would be 10 percent of 60 which is six shillings ke which is the cost of equity is given by we already seen that as 15 percent which is 0.15 so our market price that is the current market price of these shares the p naught that is the market price per share will be given by six divided by 0.15 which will give you 40 shillings so that means the shares of this company are currently selling at shillings 40 in the market the second part of the question was asking where there is growth in equity and in this case we have already seen that there is growth of 15 
sorry, there is a growth of 5%. If there is growth of 5%, that is what uh, the question is giving us. If I may take you back a little, it's saying, if there is growth of 5%, what would be the value of the company's ordinary shares? So the 5% here is our G. So the D note, we had already got N6. Then we have cost of equity, 0.15, or the discount rate, or the required rate of return. Then we have our G, which is 0 0.05. So you replace that in the formula, where D naught is 6, then we have a G, which is 0 0.05, and then we have our KE, which is 0.15. Replacing that in the formula, you get 6.3 divided by 0.1, and our current market price per share, or the P0, is given by, is get that as 6 to 3 shillings. So it means that if there is growth in equity, the current market price per share will be 63 shillings i hope this tutorial was useful this is a virtual wisdom finance and accounting tutorials thank you for your time in case you have a question or you need to make any inquiries feel free to contact me through the number given above kindly Make sure you subscribe to the channel and also invite your friends who are pursuing courses similar to these so that they can also benefit from these free tutorials. Thank you. Thank you very much.